Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to export stills from DaVinci Resolve without exporting a DRX file with it. So instead of grabbing a still from the viewer and then exporting it from the gallery, all we have to do is go to the frame that we want to export and then go to File, Export, Current Frame as Still. And we can go to JPEG and then we can name it. We'll call it Pinball and we'll hit Export. That's all there is to it. Typically what you would do is you would right click, grab still, and then that would create a still in your gallery. You can right click on the still and hit export, and then that will bring up a dialog where you can change it to whatever file format you want, and then you save it to a specific location. You can name it here, I'll call it pinball, and you hit export. Now, if I go to that file in Finder, you'll see that it actually created two files. It created a DRX file and a JPEG file. And the other thing is that it's added the still ID 1.1.1 to this JPEG. So it's pinball underscore 1.1.1. So we have no control over what that 1.1.1 does. And we have no control over the fact that it creates a DRX file with it. Now, usually this is helpful because the DRX file is actually a power grade file and it has all of the node tree information built into it. So you could easily drag this back into DaVinci Resolve and you have a still with all of the node graph information on it. A lot of times I'm trying to create stills to share on social media, stuff like that, and I don't necessarily want a DRX file with it, and I don't really want the numbers after it either because I want it to be a clean file. The beauty of this workflow is that you can actually do this from any page in Resolve. So even if we're on the edit page, we can go to file, export, current frame as still, we don't have to flip between the color page and the timeline page to do this. I'll go back to my color page and open it in Finder, and you'll see that the file name that it created also doesn't include the automatic still ID after it. It's just a clean file name that says pinball, which is what we named it. It also has all of the same properties. It's 3840 by 2160. It's identical to the still that we grabbed and then exported in every single way. Now, one thing to note is that the resolution of the exported file is dependent on your output resolution. So if we go down to project settings, and then we go to master settings, our timeline resolution is set to 3840 by 2160. And then if we go to image scaling, our output scaling is set to match timeline settings. So if we wanted to output an HD still, we could change the output resolution to 1920 by 1080. Make sure we have it to scale entire image to fit and hit save. And now if we go to file, export, current frame as still, we'll call it pinball HD and then go into finder and we have pinball HD and you'll see that it is 1920 by 1080 and it's 1.2 megabytes. So this is great if you're exporting stills for YouTube thumbnails or social media sharing, you don't want the file sizes to be too big or website, I'm going to change it back to match timeline settings. If you right click just in the gray area in the gallery, if you actually do want to export stills with the DRX file, I would recommend having this check mark checked, use labels on still export, and that makes sure that you can actually label them in Resolve. So I'll call this pinball machine, so it doesn't overwrite it. I'll right click, I'll hit export, and then it automatically has that file name up here. We'll hit export, go back to finder, and now it says pinball machine 1.1.1. So it used that still label on the export, which is kind of convenient. The still ID is based on the timeline. If I go to another frame and I grab another still, you'll see that this is 1.3.1. If I grab another still, this is 1.8.1. So it typically organizes them in the order that they are in the timeline. So the numbers in the still ID stand for the track number is the first number. The second number is what number clip that is in that track. And then the third number is the version number. The last thing I wanna mention, which is something I actually figured out when I was talking to my friend Blaze, who we were chatting about this and he inspired this video, is that a lot of times you bring in an exported file into Resolve to grab stills to share on website or social media. And he runs into an issue because in that mode, you only have one track and one clip. So all of your still IDs are going to be 
1.1.1 because it's track one, first clip, and first version. So when he exports all the stills, it overwrites the stills and only creates one because they all have the same naming. So to get around that, you can either use the file, export current frame as still, or you can create a new version every time you grab a still of that clip, or you can label all of them in the still gallery, make sure use labels on still export is selected, and then export all of those as a still. Not many people use display LUTs in the DaVinci Resolve preferences, but if you are using a display LUT, you wanna make sure that this is selected so that it matches what you're seeing in Resolve to what your exported still is. If you're having issues with the color not matching, it might be this setting right here. The other interesting thing that I'm pretty sure is universal is that any still exported from DaVinci Resolve will have the sRGB Gamma 2.1 profile. I'm not sure if there's any way around that. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's always gonna be sRGB Gamma 2.1, even though in Resolve we're working in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. The only way around that is to work within Rec. 709A, which is a whole other workflow that I mention in other videos. So if you're interested in that, check out some of my other videos on my YouTube. The beauty of this workflow too, is that you don't end up creating a bunch of gallery stills, which can take up a lot of space over time and they can make your DaVinci Resolve database on your hard drive a lot bigger and kind of bloated. So I think it's always good practice to keep your stills gallery pretty clean. And this is a great way to do that. If you like the color grade of these clips, I actually colored it using my S-Log3 to Rec. 709 Creative LUT. You can check that out at LUTCompany.com. I also sell some film emulations, other conversion LUTs for other cameras, creative LUTs, stuff like that. Check it out at LUTCompany.com. Hopefully this tip was helpful for you and you learned a few other things while you were here. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.